back again to talk your head off. JJ here, everybody. I just wanted to, uh, on a roll this morning. I uh, just finished up my uh, long dissertation lecture on uh, Pisces symbols and uh, felt like doing a couple more. So while I'm at it, why not? Um, this one, uh, if you take a look around the kit, uh, you might see it. It's kind of there on some of the, uh, the heads, um, but, uh, it's not the most interesting subject to tackle, but it is one that I have for some reason spent an inordinate amount of time, uh, discussing, uh, with other drummer friends of mine and, and stuff like that, but, uh, drum heads, um, some people are like me and, and they go real deep into the weeds on them and other people just put a set of heads on and, and never change it for 20 years. <laughs> so there's wh whatever type of drummer you are, um, I just figured I'd come on and, uh, and just have a chat about some of the choices I'm making and, and tuning methodology and stuff like that. So, but mostly just for this video, I think I'll focus on, uh, the choice of heads that I'm using um, on this particular kit, because um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of experimentation on this kit. Uh, this particular kit is uh, my Tama Grand Star kit. Um, this is the one that I play the most frequently. Uh, it's in all of my uh, drum videos. Um, yeah, it's in all of them, and uh, so it's the kit you would see if you're looking back, and you know it's. Uh, it gets the most head changes and tuning and so on. I'm pretty familiar with it and, and what works well with it. Um, so to kind of go back just a touch, um, when I was growing up, there was kind of, even if you look at the old Modern Drummer magazines, there was kind of only really one choice for heads. Um, and if you lived in a small town like I did, there literally was only one choice and that was Remo. Um, Remo was like, I didn't even, honestly know there was a different drum brand. I thought it was just, there was Remo and that was it. Uh, until I, I saw Modern Drummer and I saw some other brands and, uh, and realized there was some choice. Um, I didn't live in a, a town that had that choice. So for years I just, uh, not stuck, but I, I used Remo and it was what I knew and, and what I was familiar with. Um, for the most part, I think uh, I had looked at a lot of the drummers that I, I kind of liked growing up and, and more or less copied what they were using. And uh, when I was younger, I didn't really have, you know, a, a focus on, you know, chasing certain tones or sounds that I was after or trying to find my own kind of unique voice. So I, uh, I would just copy things I had seen and, and different muffling, you know, just, just to learn. And uh, as an aside, it, uh, I don't think I've addressed this in another video, but uh, I'm 99% self-taught. Um, self-taught drummer, self-taught for, you know, uh, tuning, uh, self-taught for, you know, reading music and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's neither good nor bad, but um, I think either, Either way you go about it, if you are taught or if uh, you know, you're know you picking these things up yourself, I think experimentation with different uh, instruments and different um, you know, products is, is how you discover your own thing. And um, so as a younger player copying people, I tended to gravitate towards just, you know, um, I had always been drawn to um, uh, like a dot head on the snares. Uh, I would see drummers with those you know, the white head and there would be the, the circle in the middle. And uh, I didn't really understand what it was. I just thought it looked cool and that's what you're supposed to use on a snare. And uh, 30 years later, I'm still using <laughs> those heads. Like it's, it's, uh, it's become a staple, probably the only staple uh, that I've really kept with uh, for snares in particular. I've tried other, uh, other heads, uh, you know, emperors, double ply heads, um, different dots, you know, there's some good ones and uh, certain drums uh, I have, even in my drum collection, my snare drum collection, um, there's a, a particular head from Evans that's, uh, 
uh, it's an, I think it's called the HD dry. It's a vented drum head. And uh, if you have a, a snare that's really ringy and you're trying to tame a little bit of it without muffling, that head is wonderful and it feels great to play. Um, it has a lot of like give and a soft feel even when it's tuned up high. Um, durability was never an issue with it being a single ply head for me either. Um, luckily, I, I've, uh, I've never been the type of player that really dented drum heads. I found um, at one point I started to try to use um, nylon tip sticks that were a ball shape versus an acorn shape. And I had noticed that when I was using the ball shape uh, tips uh, that I was really, really pinging up the drum heads and denting things. And um, so after you know a period of time, I, I ended up going back towards nylon tip, acorn shape, as well as wood tip, acorn shape. And uh, I've, I've, uh, I, I don't, I just don't, I, I, I don't know if it's a technique, if it's a, a way I play off the drum or something, but um, I don't dent heads. These heads, uh, especially on these toms, you can see they have a little bit of uh, wear in the middle. Uh, and I'll get to why this brand is particularly special um, because these drum heads are six years old, probably. Um, they've been on this kit probably 80% of that time. So these are played heads. They have thousands of hours of play on them. Um, no dents. And uh, it's not all me, it's not all technique. I think it's, uh, I don't tune the heads very tight. I like a really low pitch drum sound. So the heads are fairly slack. There's quite a bit of give to these heads. And uh, you know, that's if you're playing hard and you know, you, it's easy to dent up a head that's not really under tension. Um, but yeah, um, I should tell you what brand it is. Seven minutes into the video, you think I might've done that already, but uh, moving on from Remo, um, you know, I experimented, I've used Remo up until about seven years ago. Um, the area that I moved to, um, we have an excellent drum shop here um, and they carry a huge selection of different brands and things. And, um, I found out that uh, they were an Aquarian seller. And so now Aquarian is a drumhead brand that I was very familiar with. Um, reading Modern Drummer, you would see the advertisements with uh, Roy Burns, who was, um, you know, I think the, the founder of the company. Um, and he was a, uh, an excellent drummer himself. And uh, they would always talk about in the advertisements of how um, even when Aquarian drum heads were off of the drum, just when you were holding them by the rim, if you would tap them in the middle, the head would have uh, a tone there already. Um, and, uh, you know, I always thought that was kind of unique because when you would take the other brands, like a Remo, and you'd hold it and tap it, it would just sound like a garbage bag. Like, you know, like nothing. There's just plasticky, uh, you know, you know the sound. And, uh, but when I was finally able to get my hands on an Aquarian head and, and do the tap test, as they called it, um, I realized what Roy was saying was true. Like the, the tones are, are there in the head, even out of the box when it's not under tension. And, uh, you know, I'd seen, uh, uh, back in the day, you know, guys like Nick Menza from Megadeth and just a, a very small handful of, uh, of drummers that I was, uh, kind of new were using them. I, I don't know if like Jack DeJohnette and uh, a few other kind of jazz guys had always been with Aquarian. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like it was, they were second in the 80s and the early 90s before Evans really took off. I think Aquarian was kind of like, you know, not neck and neck with Remo, but definitely the second place. And uh, Evans has obviously come along and surpassed them since. Um, Aquarian seems to be kind of like the, you know, the, uh, the area, a lot of gospel drummers is who I see using Aquarian now. And, and, uh, not so many rock guys. I know there are, but I, I just don't know them, but I, I see Aaron, not Aaron Spears. Um, uh, I can't think of some of the gospel drummers names, but, uh, you know, crazy drummers and, 
and these guys are using Aquarian, and it's good to see the brand as at least being recognized for something like that. But um, as a, an introduction to Aquarian, um, I just grabbed, uh, you know, a few of the snare heads. Um, at the time, I probably had pinstripes on the, these kits from the factory, when, when Tama released the Grand Stars, they would come outfitted. Um, I believe at that time they were, they had gone to pinstripes. You know, previously in some iterations, uh, they would use like a, a the clear dot heads, uh, like the CS uh, line from Remo. Um, like I have factory Tama heads on my Imperial Star kit that have the Tama logo and their Remo CS uh, dot heads. Um, so, and I always thought, to me, it's like uh, if if that was what Tama decided or whatever manufacturer decided from the factory, then that was probably a, you know, a, a good head to build your baseline from. So pinstripes normally were always on this drum set. And uh, I've, I've experimented with all the lines from Remo over the years. You know, I, I tried ambassadors, excellent heads. It just, I, I went through them too fast. Um, you know, they would just, uh, the coating would come off and they just, they didn't hold up. And uh, so Emperor's, you know, uh, coating, for me, uh, as an aside, that was uh, I, an issue I was having with Remo heads and why I really actually started to look for another brand. Um, there was a, a period of time, uh, I don't recall exactly when, sometime probably in the mid 2000s. And uh, I'd always gotten the same snare head, the Remo CS coated uh, dot head, single ply. You know, it's been around forever and I've used them forever. I've thousands of them at this point. And what I was experiencing was uh, there was a manufacturing issue and um, the coating never lasted forever anyways, by no means. But um, there was a point where the heads felt brittle, number one. Uh, they didn't last nearly as long. Uh, they were way less tolerant to weather changes. So when you'd be, you know, on the road from a cold environment to a warm environment, they would just split. Like even if you allowed the, the drums to acclimate to the, the warmer temperature, the heads just, you know, heat from the lights seemed to have, like the, you know, park hands and venues when it was still all bulbs and not LEDs, the heat generated from those things. If there was a focused heat that would be on the snare head, they would just, it, they just weren't holding up. And, uh, you know, the coating would last a good amount of time on Remo heads, but there was a point where all of their coated heads were just so poor. It was a very obvious issue to me. And uh, it wasn't one batch. This was happening to me over a period of a couple of years. I would buy, you know, two or three heads at a time, change out a couple snares, wait a while, replace those, and it was, it wasn't just one batch. It was a, a large quantity of heads. And I was getting, uh, at the same time, the prices of those heads had been starting to rise as well. And, and so it became time to look for something else. Great drum shop in my area, carries Aquarian, the full line of Aquarian, not just a few heads. So luckily I was able to get my hands on uh, the Aquarian version of the Remo CS coated single ply with the dot. And the head, um, the best thing I can say about it was that it, uh, felt like home. Um, for me, uh, feel of the drums is very important. So like, uh, tuning, I do a lot of my tuning from the bottom heads actually. And the top head is more like a feel thing. Um, so the, it has to feel good. It has to have a good stick response and all that stuff. And sometimes that feel doesn't yield to a, uh, a great sound. So I use the bottom heads, more of a tuning, um, uh, kind of a trick to get into the, uh, the range that I want. And then I, I, I strike a good balance that way. And uh, so for me, when I was, you know, getting the heads on and, and you know, uh, the one thing I noticed right off the top of the, the, the bat was that, uh, you know, the Aquarian heads didn't need to be stretched and uh, seated in the same way that uh, the Remo heads did because um, I actually don't know why. I can't even get into why that is, but I've never uh, never followed that doctrine 
that everyone seemed to follow with Remo, where you would put it on, you know, with a bass drum, like Simon Phillips would stand on the bass drum to stretch the head out. Um, I've, I've not done that with these and uh, I, I, I haven't felt the need to. The heads, um, they sit fine on the bearing edges as is and uh, when you tune, you don't get that crack and that, the glue pulling out, like the, the, the Aquarian heads just don't have that. And uh, I mean, there's a, you know, plenty of literature maybe describing why that is and, and things like that, but I won't get into it here. Um, so snare head goes on. Um, I'm immediately 100% comfortable with like the feel, the response, the sound is there. So I continue playing the head. Um, and it was on a snare drum that I was using live. So we were playing weekly um, at rehearsals and you know a handful of shows a month. And uh, so it was getting a lot of use and uh, you know, a lot of use. And uh, coming from those bad batches of Remo, I mean, it just became apparent right off the bat that this head was vastly, vastly superior to those Remo ones. Not sonically, but just as a, um, you know, a usability sort of thing. Um, I had no fear of the, the splitting of the head anymore. Um, I don't know what it is, but um, even when the head has split, I have a couple of them that I've, I've kept just for, just a funny story, I guess, but um, I had split a head and I actually kept it on uh, on purpose and kept playing it to see how long it would go before it completely became unusable. And uh, after it split on the, the dot portion of the head, the head remained playable for at least two or three weeks, playing every day. And uh, for at least an hour, sometimes more. Um, and even when I took the head off, it was still, it still would have gotten through a few songs at a, a show. So durability off the charts for these things. Um, the other amazing part that I notice is that I don't know what the coating that they use is, um, but it doesn't, uh, it does wear off. And you know, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not magic. It wears off eventually, but what's not left behind is that ugly kind of like a gray on the Remo heads, there would always be like a, 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 you know, where the coating had worn off and it would be just this black area. And not that I cared that much about the aesthetic of it, but the coating would completely wear away. And then, you know, it would probably affect the tonality of the head as well. You know, the way that uh, sound transfers and, and through physical objects, if there's like a, you know, I'm not going to get into it, it's too crazy. Um, but yeah, like, with the Aquarian heads, as I said, these heads are six years old. And you look at them, you can see where they're a bit dirty from, you know, drumsticks hitting them. But there is no wear indicator. Um, the coating has kind of gone away from that area, but the surrounding area still has the textured coating on it. You can hear it. There's a, a texture there still. Um, and uh, so, it's amazing to me. I, that was such a massive change, especially because those Remo heads, like the coating was wearing off the first half hour I would play. And uh, within that first half an hour, I would notice a tonal change to the drum head uh, from, from it being fresh to, uh, to when that coating would wear off. And uh, so getting this snare head on and seeing that uh, firsthand, uh, the difference that it made, I was 100% convinced um, that I should try on the rest of the kit. The nice bonus with Aquarian is, I, I don't know where you may be watching this video from whatever part of the world you're in. For me, in Canada, uh, where I live, um, Aquarian drum heads are half the price of a comparable Remo head. So, for instance, on that gong drum behind me, that is a 22-inch bass drum head. Um, as of 2024, we're in October 2024 right now, a, uh, Remo, that is a, uh, that's an emperor weight. So a double ply coated bass drum head, uh, from Remo that head probably currently costs about $110 at my local shop. Um, 
the Aquarian version is about 50, maybe 60. Could have gone up, but uh, anyway, when it came to outfitting a kit this large, top and bottom heads, the reason I never did it that often was because of the cost. And uh, I'm not one to change drum heads uh, very often anyways. I, uh, I'm of the old school jazz mindset where if it still sounds good, then it's fine. And uh, I, I hear it from people all the time, well, you should put new heads on your kit, it'll sound better. This kit sounds great, like, why? Go ahead, explain to me. Uh, to me, it sounds exactly. I don't hear a difference between new heads and these heads. They've, I rarely have to tune the drums, they stay. I don't know when I've tuned them last, to tell you the truth. I, it, I, sometimes I have to tighten a lug every now and then, just to, if I'm hitting a lot of rim shots, I, I tighten the lug up and that's about it for tuning. Once the heads get on and I find the range that they're in, um, you know, these are triple flanged hoops, so they're not really that well known for holding tuning compared to a die cast hoop. But I don't have that issue. Uh, snare drums, because of the amount of rim shots, I find I have to at least tighten the lugs up every now and then. But as far as tuning to get the pitch where I want it, I, I, I haven't tuned these drums in a very long time. And uh, which is nice because it, it's such a chore. Um, and uh, it's just nice not to have to do it. So, um, yeah, so once I, you know, saw the cost of the heads, it was a no brainer to, you know, decide to outfit the whole kit that way. Um, so I've gone like, I've always, luckily with Aquarian, you can find comparable, um, heads to what you've been using. If you've been using another brand, you know, they're all either single ply, double ply. There's some specialty heads that are, you know, triple ply, but who cares? Those are, those are for guys that aren't me. So um, I was really getting a, a drawn to the sound of coated heads. And uh, you know, it's just, I don't play with brushes or anything, but uh, I just, uh, coated's a little warmer, a little bit more uh, resonant on the warm side versus a clear head, which is just kind of like a, you know, a very pointed attack. It, it still has the same, uh, you know, low, low frequency kind of warmth and stuff like that, but the coating adds a little something. It's kind of hard to quantify, but I mean, it's, it's, it's in the literature as well for most of the drum head manufacturers that that's the case. Um, so I decided to go coated heads. So these are the Aquarian Response 2, um, which are, you know, I think pretty much exactly the same in construction and, and uh, uh, the thickness of the plies of the head. I think it's exactly the same as an emperor. Um, so if you're familiar with emperors, um, I mean, these are, uh, you know, to me, a, a, a better version of them. Um, not sonically, again, I think sonically they're very close, but I think as far as playability, holding their tuning, um, much better experience with these heads for me. Much, much better. Tuning, <laughs> not at all, in fact. Once they're on, they're on, and, and that's, that's it. With the Remos, uh, you know, they'd be sensitive to changes and temperature and I'd have to tune and, you know, pull the head off completely and reset it sometimes. Um, it's just nature of the beast, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very common thing to have to do, but I just don't have to do with these and, and that makes me happy. So, um, so yeah, these are, um, you know, emperor ply, you know, emperor heads essentially. Um, and on the bottoms, I, I use black heads, but they're just the, uh, the equivalent of like a, a Remo ambassador head. Single ply, I think it's seven mils, you know, just your typical resonant heads. Um, and, uh, I, I, you know, the heads, as I said, bottom heads are kind of where I'm trying to get a lot of the tone these days from. Um, when I do tune, I get the top head feeling how I like it, playability wise, get it somewhat in the range that I'm looking for. Uh, and then I do my fine tuning from the bottom head once I have the feel dialed in on the top head. So it might be more common, but uh, I don't hear a lot of people doing it that way, but I, I couldn't tell you where I picked the idea up from, but it's just experimenting and uh, just my methodology, I guess. Um, so yeah, Emperor's uh, a CS coded, essentially single ply dot head. Um, bass drums, I had always, uh, I was actually, a, a you know, Evans heads I've tried through the years, but um, I've only ever found two heads from Evans. Uh, 
the, I've actually returned a set of Evans drum heads because the feel of them, they, they felt like I was playing the old, um, uh, like electronic, the, the plastic pads, like they were just like a tabletop. The feel was so bad on the heads. I think they might have been the EC2s or something. And uh, <laughs> I uh, returned them, played, because the guy that sold me them at the shop was like, if you don't like them, bring them back. He was convinced that I was going to like them. And uh, I bought six heads and uh, I returned every single one of them. And he was not sure what to do. I don't think he was supposed to take them as a return, but he gave me his word and he was good by it. Um, ended up getting you know what I was familiar with instead of those. I do like the, uh, I think it's the HD Dry. It's the vented snare head from Evans. That's a great drum head. Excellent drum head. If you have a, a head that's got, or a drum that's got kind of overtones you're trying to control, that's an excellent head to do it with without adding a lot of muffling. Um, and the other head uh, for the bass drums, what I used for years um, was the Evans, I liked the Emats. Um, I'm not a big fan of, uh, I've gone back and forth with it over the years. Muffling bass drums. The, um, obvious thing that most people do nowadays is throw a pillow in there or a pad or, or something. And, uh, you know, muffling is, uh, uh, a matter of taste. Uh, you don't need to muffle drums. Um, there's a lesson I learned just by, just by watching a, a large variety of musicians and seeing what guys used and, you know, trying to achieve sounds is the idea behind muffling. A lot of people just don't think about a bass drum and they, you know, they just take a bunch of pillows and a bunch of blankets and they put it in there and just kill the tone. And uh, to me, um, you know, a lot of people, especially, you know, like modern metal and stuff like that, that the bass drum is not a, a tonal instrument. It's attack, it's click. It's just, you know, it's there. It's like tapping on a tabletop to me and uh, you know, I do delve into those styles of music sometimes, more extreme metal, and I understand why they do it. They need to have that presence and the attack to, to cut through with the tempos and things like that. But for me, I would, um, like, just having a drum set that can kind of cover all of the bases, I, would, I don't want to go that extreme um, uh, with a drum sound. If, if I was going to uh, track a song like a metal song that way I, I wouldn't even probably I would probably trigger you know a bass drum sound or find a sample or something like that and just use that it's, a, it's the, they're already there you know like um you don't need to create your own samples for that bass drum sound like there's already guys doing it that are getting the sound like Mario from Gojira or you know the, got Raymond from Fear Factory they already have the triggered bass drum sound dialed in and uh you can't do it better than them so just my opinion on that, but so back to bass drums, um, always had, you know, the EMADs on there because, uh, self muffling head, you don't need to run anything in the bass drum. When you run an empty bass drum, it's actually much louder. Um, you know, the rock guys back in the seventies, they didn't use muffling really on their drums. They would sometimes have a felt strip that went across maybe the front head or something, but for the most part, um, they would be wide open and a wide open drum is always going to be louder uh, than a heavily muffled drum. You know, you're going to get resonance. You're going to get uh, just volume and air just, you know, moving inside of this chamber. And uh, so for me, once I, I started opening up the bass drums, it was really hard to go back to a muffled thing. And, uh, you know, playing live, you'd get uh, strange looks from sound guys if you had a wide open bass drum. So I started, uh, putting a pillow inside the drum when we'd be playing live. It was just a, a comfortability thing for the sound guy, sound person. Sometimes it's women, <laughs> sound person. And uh, it would, um, you know, kind of put them at ease a little bit, help them make their job a little bit easier without me being, uh, you know, snobby about my drum sound or whatever. We're, you know, we're working together in a live venue. We're a team there. So, um, so I would do it for those shows. I would keep a pillow in there. Not really, you know, uh, in there just to absorb some of the um, uh, the resonance because in a live situation, um, you know, the uh, you want to control some of that. It can 
lead to the microphones feeding back and you don't want that. So I understand it for that, but I'm here in my studio. I don't have those issues. I'm not projecting these drums out through a PA. Um, so um, these are exactly the same size bass drums. And uh, so I've decided to go with the, um, I went with the Aquarian equivalent of a, uh, a Remo Power Stroke 3. Um, so those are a single ply head. I don't remember the thickness. I think it's 10 mils. It might be seven, but I think it's 10. Um, I like a single ply bass drum head versus a double ply because I think it has a better playability. Um, for fast um, uh, patterns and things, I don't trigger bass drums at all. These are completely live bass drums. So for me, I've had to develop a tech, my technique a little more so that uh, I can hear the drums. So I'm, I'm playing a little louder, I'm relying on the rebound of the head to really do the work for me and the pedal as well. So I'm using those two things in tandem to get the beater back far enough where I can return it so that there's enough volume um, where triggers aren't, uh, some applications, I shouldn't say they're never, uh, never uh, something I would use, but extreme metal, I don't play that stuff, but I mean, if I was ever to delve into something where the tempos are above like 240 beats per minute, I think triggering is, you can't, there's, a handful of guys that might be able to pull it off, but I'm not one of them. So triggering would be an application of that. But as far as playing here and playing, you know, for these videos or for recordings I'm doing here, no triggering, all live bass drum sound. Um, so they're running the same heads. Uh, I have an impact pad on them just to, just to help with durability. Um, I use rubber beaters on the Iron Cobras. Uh, the rubber is a good compromise between felt and wood. And the rubber kind of gives me a, a little bounce, I think. It helps a little bit on the, the pedal, the return stroke. Um, so, and I like how it sounds. It's, a, it's got kind of a, it's not clicky. It's, it's, a, it's a happy medium, I would call it. Um, so yeah, on the bass drums in particular, the right one I've decided to completely leave wide open. Uh, on the front heads, I just have another, like a, uh, the, the Power Stroke 3 resonant head. So the only muffling that's in this drum are literally the overlay rings that are built into the heads themselves. So single ply heads on the drum, no muffling whatsoever. And, uh, and uh, impact pad and uh, yeah, just tuning. Um, I don't have them tuned, uh, you know, super high or anything. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's once again, I'm tuning this back head for the feel that I want. I get it into the somewhat of the tonal range that I like, and then I use the front head um, to kind of uh, adjust that. And uh, these heads have been amazing. I've had these heads on this drum set for probably four years now. Um, I never even think of changing them. There's absolutely no reason to. They sound exactly the same as the day that I put them on. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so the right one is wide open. And lately, because they are the same size bass drum and I am trying to have a difference um, in my bass drums. I'm a, I come from like that old Alex Van Halen, the old school kind of idea that you don't want the bass drums to match perfectly. You get like a natural pulse and like a push, push pull thing with double bass when one sounds a little different. And also, I mean, it's if you want to have a, a sonic choice, if you decide to play lead bass drum with your left foot, you have a little bit of a different tonality than the right foot. Um, I mean, if both drums are two and the same, it's just, you know, it's, you might as well, I was gonna say, you might as well use a double pedal, but even with a double pedal, you don't get the same sound on the same bass drum. The beaters being offset from one another, there's, there's always gonna be a slight difference anyway. So, Trying to match bass drums to me is pointless. Um, so I don't bother. And it's, uh, it sounds great to me. It, it, it helps, helps me while I'm playing double bass because I can discern left bass drum from right bass drum. There is a difference in uh, just the character. And um, what I've done with the left one was that I've tuned the drums you know, into the same range, uh, but left the right bass drum, my main bass drum is wide open. And the left one I actually have muffled. I have a uh, small pillow that's in there that's just touching 
um, a, a small portion of the, the resonant head and a small portion of the batter head. And um, so what that one does is just kind of just kills the resonance a bit. Um, so it doesn't, you know, uh, when you're playing double bass and both drums are resonant, especially with two separate bass drums, those are big air cavities. And the resonance can build up very quickly inside those drums where it gets to be kind of overwhelming um, to the microphones. And, you know, when you, when you start mixing those things together in music, it just kind of creates this wash and eventually you end up trying to like take it out of the mix anyways and put a, you know, a gate or something on it to, to kill that. And uh, so I just, just experimenting. This is maybe not the permanent solution. Um, I've tried tuning them differently, like, you know, tuning one a little higher than the other. Uh, I don't have different size bass drums, but somebody like Danny Carey actually uses, you know, he has a 24 on his left and a 22 on the right. He has two totally different size bass drums. And uh, so that's kind of a, an interesting thing to me. Um, but you know, it's, it's different methodologies for different drummers. It's, uh, you know, play what you like. There's no rules. Like do what you want. I do. And, uh, but yeah, having the, having the distinction between the two bass drums for me is, uh, it's, uh, it's very nice and it, it helps in playing, it helps in monitoring, um, and just practice as well. Like you can hear your left and right and you can hear how the patterns work together and, uh, you know, having them be slightly sonically different, I think just, it, it's a little bit more musical that way too. It'd be the same idea as if you had, you know, uh, two 12 inch rack toms and you tuned them the same. It's like, what's the point? You can get them close, I guess, but still have one be slightly different because you might as well not have the second one if they're gonna be tuned the same. And uh, I just happen to think that way about bass drums as well. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, the floor toms are, are the same uh, configuration as the rest of the toms. Like uh, I like to have, um, you know, some uh, conformity in the sound that way. It's all the same shells and the same composition. So I've, I've kept the heads the same. Um, so I get kind of like that, uh, it's like a familial connection with the drums that way. And they sit in the same range and, you know, roughly the same. Um, the gong drum is still kind of an experiment for me. I've, um, from the factory, those drums would come with, um, this came with the factory head. When I bought this drum, I still had the factory head on it. And uh, from Tama back in the, 80s, the late 80s, I guess. Um, this drum had a Remo Ambassador head on it. Now, uh, a gong drum, I've said it in another video before, but it's not a bass drum. It's a different instrument altogether. It's To me, it's kind of halfway between a timpani and like maybe a concert bass drum or something like that. It's a, it's a percussion instrument. It's different. It's the difference between a rock and roll bass drum and one that you play in marching band with mallets. It's a might look the same, but it's not. Um, so I don't treat it like a bass drum. I treat it more like a tom. And uh, I wanted to do uh, what Simon Phillips does, which is um, a timpani head, a very thin uh, concert timpani head. Um, but those are so expensive for the heads. And I, I just, they're a special order item. And I didn't, I didn't want to get into that. So as I said, uh, Remo included the coated ambassador on these heads from the factory. They've used, um, you know, the clear dot heads. They've had pinstripes on them. I think nowadays, um, I'm actually not sure what comes on them from the factory because they use Evans heads these days and I can't remember, but um, factory Remo head coated ambassador. And uh, so to me, that's kind of like the the water, you know, the, the watermark or the high watermark of what they thought it should sound like and I should keep in that same wheelhouse. Um, I've seen people put pinstripes on them and try to mimic a bass drum. Um, and that, that's and that's not really the sound I'm after. I want something a bit more sustained and a bit more resonant. And uh, so I've kind of uh, struck a halfway point. I had a, a single ply uh, Aquarian coated head on there. And uh, because I keep the tuning so low, I was, I was that might be the only head where I was getting some, uh, some dents that I noticed. It might be the angle I have it on or something, but I was noticing the middle of the head getting a few little pings in it. 
Um, and so I decided to step up and go to uh, the same as my Tom heads. So on that is a uh, Aquarian coded response too. So basically another emperor. And uh, that head on that particular drum, it just, it kills a little of the resonance in the ring, um, but it's not enough where I really miss it. And uh, the extra little bit of durability and the extra bit of uh, like a, um, I don't tune it low. I tune it in kind of a medium range. You know, it's not high and it's it's not a bass drum, it's not low, it's not just above slack for the tension. Um, I want some tone out of it. So I am in that medium range and uh, just using a double ply head helps kind of bring the tone down or the, uh, the pitch uh, slightly more down because it is essentially the last tom in my my uh you know when i'm doing a roll it's the might be the last thing i hit i like to use it as like kind of a you know a crash cymbal and a gong drum at the same time sort of thing and um so it's got to be lower in pitch than the 18 which is right here it's got to follow in that uh that family so 18 is whatever pitch it is and the the gong drum is uh you know a third or whatever below that um, to get my my uh, my melodic phrasings, and um, so yeah, it's it's been a, a great experiment to have this head on. Uh, once again, I, I, with the exception of the snare heads, snare heads get played a lot, and I I probably change these out um, once every six months, <laughs> which is pretty good. Um, I I'm lucky that I get to practice a lot. A lot of hours get put into these heads and if I only have to change it out every six months and that's because it's you know it's torn like it has a hole or something in it. it's not because it sounds bad um, it's just a practicality thing and uh, so yeah just having these heads on I mean it's it's bad for aquarium because I'm not buying heads that often but um I, I couldn't recommend these heads more um, there's just a lot of people that don't know about them because they're not widely available and uh, luckily my shop does have them and I was able to try them. And uh, I'd encourage anyone, if you can get your hands on one, try a snare head. There's so many different snare heads. Um, Dave Grohl famously used to use the, uh, uh, the uh, it's like a high energy head. If you look at the old Nirvana photos, I mean, that, nobody was playing drums harder than that guy at the time. And for him to find a head that wouldn't break, but also sounded pretty good. Um, you know, I, I tried one of those heads as well, and they're a bit too bit too stiff for me under the stick. They're just very, um, uh, it almost feels like a marching head in a way. But durability is, you know, just off the charts. You just can't, you know, there's a famous picture of a, somebody in the advertising stabbing a knife through one of those heads and still playing it. Even when they get torn or, you know, develop some kind of a hole or something, they're still playable. Uh, so as far as for like a live show or having to get through something, it's like it's, to have that kind of dependability in a head, especially on a snare head, the most important instrument in the kit, um, is uh, it's it's nice to have that in your back pocket and not worry about it. Um, but yeah, look at the snare heads. Um, whatever your taste is, whatever um, you know genre of music you play, there are uh, plenty of specialty heads. Um, you know, for everything, everything under the sun. And uh, their coatings are great. Um, they make a, a black coated version uh, of their heads and some of the more popular ones. I have that on my, another one of my kits and, and they're amazing as well. Uh, the black coating is the same as the white coating. It just seems to last forever. Um, so you can do, in my opinion, no wrong with whatever head. You might you know, find the wrong one, or maybe it's, you know, you like single ply and you bought a double ply and don't like it. That's understandable. That happens with every brand, but um, just tonality wise, and I, I can't speak more highly of these. Um, and also too, like uh, you can probably look around and see, and um, I'm not a fan of muffling. Uh, I have muffled through the years. And I mean, I've, I've gone to extremes. I've gone, you know, I was using pinstripes and putting duct tape and <laughs> you know the 80s style and there's literally just a boom, like a cardboard box and uh you know some people like that sound and i've drifted away from that and, and kind of like a, a lot more feedback and uh you know like a resonance and a, a discernible note from the drums versus just a a blip in sound 
Um, so I've, I've gone away pretty much from muffling altogether. Uh, the only thing I do use, and I have these on all the heads, um, there's many companies that make rings, these uh, you know, muffling rings. They're just a, a cut out of a plastic drum head. And uh, you know, they just sit loosely on the head. There's nothing special about them. Um, and those, to me, are the perfect amount of muffling. Um, they maintain the resonance and they just seem to eliminate some of the, uh, the overtones. If you have a, like my 12 inch drum, the wrap isn't perfect on it. It has a seam that kind of raised up. And uh, so that area kind of tends to be uh, a little wonky in the tuning uh, lug. I have to work with it sometimes. Um, so there's an overtone sometimes at this particular lug. And uh, you know, without getting too much into the back and forth with the tuning, just, just putting the ring, the muffling ring, um, eliminates a lot of those issues, but it still lets the drum resonate. Um, doesn't affect the playability of the head. Uh, there's a lot of people that'll muffle the heads with um, moon gel, tape, uh, things that stick and adhere to the head. And uh, in the same principle as why I like the Power Stroke 3s, the Power Stroke 3s and the Force 1 is the Aquarian equivalent. It's a floating ring. So it's on the head, but it it's, uh, you know, when you strike the head, it lifts off and then it comes back on. And it doesn't lift off enough where it makes a slapping noise. Like you don't hear it, sorry. You don't hear it making that noise at all. Uh, it's way more subtle than that, but it does act as somewhat of a gate for the drum. The, uh, the ring lifts off the head just slightly when you strike it and gives it a chance to open up a bit and then it settles back down on the head um, and you know, it, it's obviously, uh, it's, it's muffling the head at the edges, um, but it's not doing it from one point in the drum. I used to find sometimes with moon gels, I would have to move the moon gel around till I found a spot where it worked best, um, where it didn't kill too much of the tone and it got rid of the overtone. I would spend 10 minutes sometimes, you know, putting the, the gel in different spots or whatever I was using. And uh, with the, the studio rings, they, uh, I just put them on and, and it gets me where I need to go. The reason I like the, uh, the Aquarian ones, it's a, I don't have the other one here, I do own them, but um, Remo makes them and, uh, and Evans as well. And the, uh, I like these ones because they are the in-between thickness. You can see they're about maybe uh, an inch thick. And uh, to me, that's like the perfect the Evans ones are about two inches thick and uh, they cover up much more of the surface of the head and they mute uh, or muffle quite a bit more. Uh, the Remo ones, I think are like a quarter inch. They're very thin and to me, they just don't quite do enough. And so the Aquarian ones, uh, once I got my hands on those, they're uh, the perfect medium. Um, just enough and not too much. And uh, it's like the three little bears. It's the warm porridge is the best. So yeah, that's, uh, this is the one about Aquarian. And uh, once again, uh, I don't have an endorsement with this company and this is uh, things I'm buying with my own money. And uh, you know, I, I can't recommend uh, these heads more. Uh, every drummer I know, I've tried to uh, you know, uh, talk to them and you know, not convert them by any means, but just open their eyes a little bit. and. Uh, and just make them aware that you know it's not just it's not just Remo and Evans and uh, there's a, a long-standing brand that's that's here. They've been around forever. Uh, I hope they don't go under. I'm gonna be very sad if that happens. But as long as they're around, I'm gonna be uh, supporting the brand uh, as much as I can. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video and get a chance to check them out yourself. This is the one about Aquarian drumheads. Cheers.